Okay, whenever you guys are ready. Cameron Weiss was an exceptional student and a dedicated athlete like many of us in the classroom right now. Throughout his high school career, he developed a love for writing and was an avid member of the wrestling and football team. After breaking his collarbone due to a wrestling injury, his doctor prescribed him with prescription opioids for his pain. Several months later, he broke his collarbone again while playing football and was given more prescription opioids. Within the next six months, Cameron became dependent on opioids, which eventually led to his heroin addiction. Cameron Weiss was found at the age of 18, foaming at the mouth by a 16-year-old sister after an accidental drug overdose. Cameron's story is only one in millions in the United States. It is stories like Cameron's that inspired our group to address the problems caused by the opioid epidemic in the United States. We then proposed the question, how are opioids affecting the lives of Americans and what can be done to help prevent the growth of this epidemic? In the next 10 minutes alone, someone in America will die from drug overdose on opioids, either heroin, or synthetic or prescription based opioids. There are many different perspectives on the ethics of opioids in America. Um, they are used to save lives, but just as easily they can be used to take away. Programs such as DARE and NOTE are used to um, teach students against uh, drugs and how to abstain from them. Uh, the government also has an aggressive stance against <coughs> opioids. This is partially due to Donald Trump's 2017 speech or campaign on um, how he's going to fight the drug epidemic. Doctors, however, have a different perspective since they're the ones that are prescribing these drugs and they're the ones saving lives. For the cultural aspects of the opioid epidemic, it is affecting all Americans in some shape or form in an equal way. All genders, age gaps, and age groups, excuse me. Social statuses and races and all backgrounds are being affected equally by the And by the numbers, this is from a 2016 survey. There are more people overdosing on prescription based opioids than heroin. And there are a huge increase 170,000 people that used heroin for the first time in 2016. That's, that's just people that admit to it on the survey. There's currently trillions of dollars in debt and was originally involved in another government shutdown. Many different factors contribute to this, but the opioid epidemic is not only contributing to the federal government's finances, but also state and local governments along with individual <coughs> wealth. First, I will address how the, how the opioid epidemic is affecting the federal government. In a study conducted by Outram Institute, they took into consideration things like premature mortality, lost wages, lost productivity, health care costs, and lost tax revenue. They estimated that the total cost of the opioid epidemic in the U.S. went from uh, $29.1 billion in 2001 to $115 billion in 2017. They also estimated that the projected cost of the opioid, the opioid epidemic would cost the U.S. in 2020 was over $199.9 billion. With this kind of burden on the economy, um, it's going to put the United States more and more into debt. Now that we have looked at what it does to the federal government, we can now see how it's affecting the state governments. Whether or not you realize that the opioid epidemic is all around you. Democratic Senator Pat Murray has been advocating to help stop the opioid epidemic in America for years now. And in a news report she wrote in 2016, she estimated that the total cost of the opioid epidemic in the state of Washington alone was over $9 billion. She also estimated that from 2012 to 2016, the total economic cost of uh, opioid-related fatalities in the state of Washington was over $34 billion. With costs like this, it's taking funding away from other critical areas like education and welfare within the states. Now we can look at individual wealth. As the U.S. continues to progress, uh, prescription opioids are becoming more prevalent on the streets and are getting easier and easier to obtain. So as the rate of abusers continues to increase, it causes health care costs to rise for individual people. It stunts the overall job growth in the economy. It increases the annual work loss cost for abusers and employers. And it eliminates teens in working conditions and also increases the insurance costs. These numbers, of, these numbers of the opioid epidemic not only remain high, but have increased since the application of the DARE program. Kristan Sparley talked about her experience with the program <clears throat> and its results in her life. She became an alcoholic 10 years after graduating from the class, despite saying no. 
Other programs have been created to do what DARE hasn't been able to. One in particular being NOPE, Narcotics Overdose Prevention Education. NOPE teaches children's about, children about the dangers of drugs with refraining from sugar coating, sugar coating information, um, even showing them funerals of the opioid abuser. <clears throat> Kate Messner also relates a personal story on the subject, writing children's books about the <coughs> dangers of opioids. <clears throat> but her uh, books were taken out of school libraries due to the graphic content that was in them. Matt Salisnick interviewed school officials that implemented the use of naloxone in, um, in New Hampshire Middle School due to the high overdose rates in the area. He also recorded that um, he also recorded that upon returning from school after the overdose, the children are given treatment um, therapy to prevent it happening again. Um, buprenorphine is a replacement drug for opioids, and while naloxone is a overdose reversal drug, and combined with therapy, it can uh, be used as a preventative measure for the opioid epidemic. We believe that by strictly regulating the amount of legal importation of opioids, we can cut down on the extras that end up on the streets through over prescriptions and, uh, and continuous prescriptions. Uh, but we also need to do a greater apprehension of the illegal drugs that make it to the US since there would be a sharp spike and increase of black book market demand since there would be no way to legally obtain these drugs. Well, we also believe that uh, requiring doctors to be retrained and recertified to do these prescriptions will greater decrease the amount they end up on the streets because if they know further how addiction works in the minds of, of how it changes people, then we can decrease the amount that ends up on the streets. Current solutions being explored by Donald Trump as announced in his 2017 campaign include first canceling a 1970 law which prevented a state from providing care at a facility which had more than 16 beds dedicated to drug addicts. And he also plans on fixing, fixing over prescriptions by requiring federal prescriptions. By, uh, requiring federal prescribers to be retrained and recertified. Uh, this is only at the federal level, but in our solution, we had more, like, more or less wanted every doctor to be retrained. Lastly, Trump mentions briefly that he plans on removing certain potions, uh, opioids from the market today. Although there are many solutions, there are also very many limitations, such as the non prescription based solutions that they have which are not designed to prevent the equipment in the first place, like uh, decreasing the amount of circulation, but they are designed to just simply save people that are overdosing instead of stopping them from getting addicted in the first place through the prescription. As a result of further research, the regulation of illegal drugs and opioid usage um, and giving better education to doctors and students may have a few costs to begin with, but will help pull the nation out of the epidemic. All right. So let's start with Nick. Um, reflecting on your colleagues' work, which one had the greatest impact on your overall understanding of the problem that your group identified? I would say Lauren had the largest impact on my overall understanding because she had the economic, and I tend to think in like a monetary values. So she, the way that she put some of the facts, such as like the high cost of the opioid epidemic uh, affecting and causing legislation to be put in place, that made me understand the issue better and be able to put into place my own things and I use it in my own. Okay, thank you. Lauren, 
What is an example of a compelling argument from one of your peers' individual reports that you decided to exclude from your team's presentation, and why? Um, Nick has the cultural perspective, and I know we looked at like other countries and how the opioid epidemic was affecting like their cultures and their economy, and we could have used that to compare it to like how it's affecting the United States too. But since our question focused mainly on America and how it's affecting Americans, we decided to exclude it. But if we did do it again, we could possibly compare it to other countries. Okay. Lila, um, give one specific way that your thinking changed as a result of learning about uh, Josh's findings. Um, so at the beginning, whenever I was doing my research, the use of naloxone no, um, no seemed like a really good idea, and um, and then the. Uh, their programs and everything uh, for preventing it was um, seemed like it would work, but in Joseph's um, work, he showed that um, is it okay to take away these opioids whenever there's so many people um, who are in constant chronic pain on a regular basis, and whenever and like deciding whether or not these people need it is um, changed my thinking. And Joseph, in what way did you improve your ability to work with a group as a result of this project? It took a lot of collaboration between all four of us and having to move our work and make it connect in certain ways, like the way that um, my research on how the illegal drug importation was going uh, also worked along with Nick or Lawrence and then Nick's as well when he was talking about uh, black market as well and how heroin with Lawrence work showed that uh, that uh, prescription opioids were doing more damage than heroin and illegal substances. All right, thank you. Thank you so much.